Uh, it is winter time in Michigan and for so many people, one of their favorite pastimes this time of year is to get out on the ice. To talk a little bit more about that, let's bring in Jim Dexter. He's uh, the fisheries chief for the Michigan Department of Natural Resources. Jim, great to have you with us. Good morning, Ronnie. Glad to be here with you today. I saw people ice skating uh, on Sylvan Lake this past weekend. I took my dog to Dodge Park. They were out there ice fishing. It looks like a lot of fun, but I will say I get a little nervous. How do people know when it's safe to go out on the ice? Well, that's a really good question because you do have to be careful. Um, typically, you need to have quite a bit of ice for it to be safe to support your weight you know, at least four inches. The DNR does not necessarily support any particular uh, depth of ice. You have to check it. Um, there are a lot of people that go out there. I mean, this is something they do every year. They know when the ice gets good, they check it. The best thing is that, you know, one, you don't go out by yourself. And two, you go where other people have been. Um, you need to have the right equipment to check that ice, whether it's an auger to get through the ice, to check that depth, to make sure it's going to support your weight <clears throat> or a spud that you can get through the ice to see how thick it is. And this has been a really difficult year, Ronnie, because it's probably going to be one of the warmest winters we've had. Um, warm temperatures, lack of snow. We, I think we just had an accident recently in your area where a snowmobiler went through the ice. You can get just a little skip of ice covered by snow and people think it's good, but it's not. So you have to be very careful. Yeah, and that it, it is tragic. And it seems like we have one of these cases every single year. In that case, it was a snow snowmobiler over on Wolverine Lake. Um, I know that we were talking with the West Bloomfield Fire Department and they had a situation where someone's dog went out on the ice um and the you know their pet fell through and then died as well so these are so many things for people to watch for um so but is it better if you're closer to the water's edge or do you really need to know that water before you even step out there well it's definitely good to know uh the lake that you're going on and what the water's like and depending on what the weather is like sometimes the edge can be very difficult because if there's sunshine, if the ice is kind of thin, it'll melt on the edge, but it'll be good out later, you know, out further on the, on the lake. So you really do need to know where you're going. Some lakes have springs. Sometimes there's currents that are coming in from rivers. Ice can be thinner in one area and plenty thick in another. And again, this has just been a very, very difficult year. Um, I mean, here we are at the end of January, typically in Southern Michigan, and I'm from your area. I grew up in Troy and went to school in Bloomfield Hills. Um, typically, you know, we've been fishing for six weeks already. We're usually fishing in mid-December, definitely by Christmas. And really, it's only been about the past week that you can get out on our local lakes in the southern part of the state. If you go up to the northern part, you know, up in the UP, we've got a foot, 15 inches of ice. Um, but there are lakes that are still wide open. Uh, Higgins Lake is open. As an example, deeper, deeper inland lakes are open, but shallower, smaller lakes you know, they're getting good ice. For I have talked to a lot of people that um, like to go ice fishing. I think they're crazy. But for those that maybe want to try it for the first time, what is the attraction? It's cold out there. Oh, if you're dressed, if you're dressed right, it's going to be just fine. You know, you got to have some gloves, you got to have a good warm hat, you know, but you don't need a lot to go out, you know, and to, to participate in ice fishing, it's it's like any other sport. Uh, you can really go all in and get some really nice equipment. You can have a, a sled that you pull out that's a pop-up. It's like a pop-up camper. You know, it blocks the wind. You have some light source. You have some heat source in there. You can take your coat off and you can fish in real comfort. But that's a lot of work. You can also go out there very simply with just a bucket and an auger and uh, a cheap rod. In fact, I've got I've got an example here of the rods that people use. You know, it's a little rod. It's about three feet long, small reel with a you know a, a, a hook on there that you're going to put a minnow or a wax worm, something that you can use for bait. Here's a different type of rod that people use. It's called a schoolie reel. You can buy rods like this for you know ten fifteen dollars at a bait shop, and you're good to go. And you get a nice 35 degree day out and the sun shine is the sun shining and the wind is low. 
you cut a hole, sit on your bucket. It's really nice to sit out there, especially if the fish are biting. If the fish are biting, you aren't going to notice the cold. I'm just thinking, and when you said a heat source, somehow or another, the words heat source while you're sitting on a lake and cutting a hole in the ice, those words don't seem like they go well together. Yeah, there, there's, I mean, from the simple hand warmers that you put in your pocket, you know, like if you're skiing or, you know, taking a walk, you can buy those little hand warmers. Those are always good to have. Um, and in these, if you're like in a shanty, people will bring little propane tanks and there's little buddy heaters that you can, you know, take the chill out of the air. So uh, with that, uh, Jim, do you, is it better or is it easier to fish in the winter time than summertime? I mean, are the fish biting more, I guess is what I want to say. You know, it depends. There are slow times. There are fast times. The, the good thing about winter is this, is, you know, if, especially in your area, you know, I think about Kegel Harbor, Sullivan Lake, Cass Lake, you know, not everybody has a boat. Not everybody can get out on those waters, but you can experience in them once they freeze up, you know, getting on at a public access, you're free to roam. You are free to roam that lake and find a spot to fish. Um, and there are a lot of good places in your area to do that. You just got to be careful, you know, and make sure, you know, if you're new to it, you want to find somebody that's done it before that can take you out. Because if you're new, you're going to want to catch fish. If you don't catch fish in three or four hours, you're not going to want to do this again. But if somebody can put you on fish, you're not going to notice it's cold. You're going to have a great time and you're potentially going to have a meal to take home. I was watching an episode, I think it was on Real Sports, where they were talking about um, some huge event. I forget where it was. Some of these people really invest a lot of money in technology and equipment and trying to find the fish. And to me, I was like, well, isn't that kind of like cheating? Yeah, you can you can look at it that way. I mean, technology has really advanced over the last couple of decades. So in addition to, you know, people pulling these portable shanties with a snowmobile or with their four wheeler. They've got various types of sonar electronics. You can even put cameras down and that's become very, very popular. People will cut their hole and you lower a camera down to where you're fishing and you can watch the fish coming into your bait and know that, you know, oh, that's a walleye, that's a perch, that's a bluegill. Great. Let's see if we can catch them. So yeah, there's lots of, uh, you can invest quite a bit into this sport. Wow, it really is fascinating for people that have never done it once to see how involved people will take it as well. And I guess that's with any sport. Um, Jim Dexter with us here. He's with the Michigan Department of Natural Resources. I saw a recent headline, Jim, talking about the water levels on the Great Lakes can you talk a little bit about the possibility of the climate change and what this could mean overall for the state of Michigan and our waters? Sure. It's, um, it's really quite something to see. Um, I mean, last year we experienced some of the highest water levels in the Great Lakes that we have seen since 1986, 1987. In fact, I believe that they surpassed that. Um, they have come down about 12 inches since July. But we're and we're getting near the end of the cycle where the lakes will be coming down from evaporation and they will start going back up as soon as things start melting. Um, and it's an issue. It's a huge issue for shoreline property owners. I know they're in the you know St. Clair shore areas, down river. Um, you know, the water levels are right at land levels, and there has been property damage, and there may very well likely continue to be property damage. The difficult thing in terms of climate change, you know, uh, changes in weather patterns is we don't know what's going to happen in the very near future. Models are very uh, clear in that temperatures are going to continue to warm, uh, and that may mean that we have more wet seasons um, as we have had the past couple of years. Uh, I believe 2019 was one of the wettest years on record for Lake Michigan or for the state of Michigan, and that raises the water level in all of the Great Lakes. So it's an issue. Um, and right now the Army Corps of Engineers follows the water levels. They give monthly updates as to their predictions. And it's a 50-50 uh, crapshoot right now, whether we're gonna be back up to record levels this year or whether it will go down. Based on the past couple of months, we've, we are seeing very little precipitation. And that's throughout the Great Lakes Basin. Even in the Upper Peninsula, there's not very much snow and it's very, very unusual. 
Yeah, so what happens now impacts uh, our water levels into the summer months as well then. Yes, it definitely does. You know, so you've had people on many inland lakes, they've had to raise their docks or they've had to put in floating docks to uh, account for those water level changes. We have lakes here in Southwest Michigan. I live in Kalamazoo right now. Uh, and I know there are lakes in Southeast Michigan where the water levels are high. People have had to sandbag their properties. And that's something that they've never had to do before. So it's not just the Great Lakes that are high, it's our water tables are high. We have water everywhere. And that's one of the great things about Michigan is we are a water rich state. Um, and we should be thankful for that. But right now, I mean, this is a difficult time for everybody because of the conditions that uh, high water levels have on lakefront property owners. Uh, and, you know, so many times that property is high value property and very well sought after it. But then you uh, know people that maybe have had to deal with some of these things and they'll move inland because they're like, it's not worth the hassle, right? Um, yes, Jim, that is so, true. So you said you grew up here in our area, Troy, Bloomfield Hills. Uh, how'd you get into your line of work? Uh, family. I was my, with my grandfather. We had a place up in Northern Michigan and I spent a lot of time on a small inland lake in Lewiston and learned to fish and hunt. And I've been a fish nut ever since I can remember. I mean, it goes back to, you know, three, four five years old, went to school at Michigan State University, got a degree in fisheries and wildlife. And I've been working in fisheries now since 1983. Um, love the state of Michigan. We have world class fisheries resources. I mean, there are not very many places in this country. And, and I'll talk about not wintertime, but in the summertime where you could you could go out and take a charter boat in the morning and catch Chinook salmon, coho salmon, steelhead as an example, lake trout. You could come in in the afternoon, you could go bluegill fishing, bass fishing, perch fishing. In the evening, you could go trout fishing on a river, catch brook trout, brown trout. Uh, you know, the diversity that we have is truly amazing. And that's throughout all corners of the state. And I'm, I'm so proud to be able to lead my staff to manage those fisheries and improve them for, for our citizens of the state and for people that come and visit. So with so many kids uh, going to school remotely and individuals, um, their parents may be working remotely as well. Have you seen an increase in the number of people uh, taking advantage of our water and um, some of our natural resources this past year? Yeah, and that's that's true more than just fisheries. It's true throughout everything that we do in the Department of Natural Resources, whether it's people hiking on trails, whether it's people camping, hunting and fishing huge increases in participation. In fishing in particular, we saw an increase, a 10% increase in license sales this past year. Anyone that's 17 or over needs a license. If you're 16 or younger, you do not need a fishing license. Um, so we saw a 10% increase and a 40% increase in young people doing it for the first time or at least the first time in the past five years. So huge jump in our metrics because we've been pretty stable over the last several years. We're losing a little bit of our angling population, uh, but it was very good to see uh, the increased participation across the board, whether you're out walk, going for a walk or hunting or getting out on the water. Yeah, Cause you never know some of those kids that maybe did it for the first time, they could be the future Jim Dexter. There you go. <laughs> I like that. I like that a lot. Uh, Jim, quickly before we let you go, uh, anything maybe we didn't ask that you want to share uh, with our audience? Well, at least in terms of the ice fishing, I really do want to um, hit on that message of please be safe. You know, make sure you go out with somebody, make sure you check the ice. Um, we've got a lot of great opportunities throughout the entire state of Michigan. Uh, these are great species to fish for. You're primarily fishing for bluegill, for perch, for walleye, for northern pike. They're, they make great table fare. And it's, a, it's really a great family activity. Uh, to take kids out for their first time is really a lot of fun. And, you know, they can, if, if the fish aren't biting, they can ice skate, they can run around and chase each other, throw snowballs, bring snacks if you're taking kids for the first time, because after the first hour, they're going to want to eat something and hopefully you're gonna catch some fish and have a great time and have a new angler. 
<laughs> That's awesome. Jim, thank you so much for being with us. We so appreciate your time. Thank you, Ronnie. Glad to be with you. Happy fishing. Thank you.